You may have heard it said by some of them of not so long time ago, Prince Charles Edward Emmanuel said, or is said to have said, don't bring the Bible into Africa. But I say to you, don't bring white Christianity <laughs> into Ethiopia. And what do I mean by that, Habarim? First of all, when we talk about the Bible, what do you mean by the Bible? I think the Bible they have here is it was a holy Bible. It says something like literal standard version. I don't know what I don't know I don't know I don't know what kind of, what Bible you mean. Give us a teaching of His Majesty. What does His Majesty say about the Bible? A couple of points of correction. Right here is I Jemine Star. This is his. Uh, this is a still right of um, the vid the video. I think he has a, a priest named Hannibal who's given his. Um, you know, reasonings, you know, on various things. A few things were, were interesting and agreeable, but then he went into this talk about the Bible and, and some other philosophies and ideologies that are not in agreement with the teaching of His Majesty, right, that I and I know of. Now, perhaps we may be wrong with this, but when His Majesty says to I and I concerning the Bible, as Rastafari, and a particular, we could say, a mansion in the house, we could say, the Beta Rasta for our particular mansion says, it's like if a particular denomination, how many denominations are there, right, you know, in, in Christianity? You know, there's the Protestant, there's the Catholic, there's the um, Methodist, the Episcopalian, oh man, there's, there's so many of them, Evangelical, Baptist, oh my goodness, right? <laughs> But just because they use the Bible, does that make the Bible bad? See, it's, it's the mentality, right? It's, it's, it's the mentality. Don't bring that white, you know, Christianity mentality, right, into Africa or into Ethiopia. But then there's some contradictions, right, to what is being said. One of my brothers, he, he kind of pointed out something a little bit earlier, you know, right here about, yeah, about letting the white man into Boba Shanti where his claim that the Bible is a white man obia book. Right, uh, yeah, that's, I think that's a recent video. So he has a series, I guess, maybe some interviews that he's doing with ones and ones. And yeah, this one says, was this a curse to let in the white man? Right, E-A-B-I-C Rastafari. And then there's another one, Priest Hannibal on E-A-B-I-C and Prince Emmanuel. So ones and ones are giving their, you know, testimonies. We could say one of the kind of disciples, so to speak, you know, or disciple of the disciples giving a testimony. But there was another part that was brought to my attention, which was totally off. He talked about, well, Ethiopia wasn't conquered. I guess it was an anti-Bible rant right here. It wasn't conquered by, you know, the sword, but it was conquered by the Bible. This is what um, priest uh, Hannibal said, right, on... I Jemine stars on, on his channel, on his on his pod, YouTube podcast, you could say, yeah? And um, he started talking about um, Frumentus, right? You know, Frumentus. Let's go to this right here. You, you want to know the truth of the matter? You need the roots of the matter. We need to go to the roots of the matter. But he said that Ethiopia was conquered by the Bible. And according to him, right, this was the 4th century. I, I, I'm asking a question because... I have to question, you know, the disinfo that he was putting forth, the, the incorrect, the hearsay, the incorrect information, the disinformation, that, the, fake, the fake news that he was putting across. So it's fake news. Ethiopia conquered by the Bible, fake news. If anything, today's Ethiopia has been conquered, in a sense, at least the Christian elements, right, by the whitewash iconography. Right, by that whitewash iconography that we see going on post after 1975. You see this a whole lot right? that's going on. We already showed once and once earlier the picture that the, the icon that Magi had the artist um, Alpha Work Tekla, you know, to create, you know, of the mother and child. You know, the black Madonna and child, the Ethiopian, we say the Ethiopian version of that. Right? Also other artworks that very clearly... My shows improve, even if we go back to what is alleged. This is going to have to be a whole other video to kind of address the confusion, the fake news regarding Ethiopia and Christianity. Ah, that's a good title, ain't it? Ain't that a good title, the fake news regarding Ethiopia, the Bible, and Christianity? Ah, 
boom, the fake news. Because now, some would think that what occurred in the 4th century during the time of Ezana. I think Hannibal, if we listen to what Priest Hannibal said, he was talking about Yakuno Amla. He was confounding the 4th century, events from the 4th century, with events from the 13th century. Two totally different times. But when he talked about Frumentius, Frumentius definitely is the 4th century period of time. And now in the 4th century period of time, what actually, you know, what actually happened during this particular time? If we get into some of the... Um, the details of it should we go into it right here or should we just have this as a basic vid right here i think we want would like to go into it on the fake news you know you know fake news right fake news regarding ethiopia the bible and christianity many people are putting out the fake news that well this is when ethiopia first became christian what do you mean by that first became christian Right? And for Rasta, or one who said they're Rastafari to say, they say, wait, hold on for a moment. Have you not heard or read when his majesty says, no doubt you all remember reading in the Acts of the Apostles? Yeah, Acts of the Apostles. Is that in the Bible? Right? So I guess we don't have to bring, right, you know, the white man's version. If anything, don't bring the white man's version of the Bible, right, into Africa, into Ethiopia. How about that? that that's, a, that's a little more clear right there. Don't bring the white man's version. Right? But mainly, don't bring the white man's mentality. Right? It's like the Israelites. This reminds me of the Israelites, what we as Rastafari are going through, because Jah has like kind of brought Israel out right, of Egypt. Remember how he brought them out of Egypt you know, in the second book right, of the Bible known as Exodus, you know, Shemot? And those ones and ones, they had a lot of mix up, mix up, too much mix up, mix up. They wandered for 40 years, called that mix up, mix up. Right? So it was like what they say, you could take a nigga out of Egypt, but you can't take the nigga, right? You could take the nigga out of Egypt, but you can't take the Egypt out of the nigga. It's something like that. So you, so you could take the, the black man, right, out of so-called Christianity or white man's Christianity, but you can't take the white man Christianity. So you'd be talking about no Bible, no Christianity, but then you, you, you peep and say, wait. How how are you doing what you're doing? You're doing what you're doing, freestyling off of the Bible. You see what I'm saying? So you're freestyling off of the Bible and you're doing what you're doing. But we're going to save this for another one right here. We're going to get into the whole real story. Right? So suffice it to say, Ethiopia was not conquered by the Bible. Okay, if Ethiopia was conquered by the Bible, what do you mean by the Bible? Are you talking about the Old Testament or the New Testament? <laughs> And you can't say either, right, and truly be given glory, right, to his majesty in spirit and in truth. It's like when, when the Christ, Yeshua, right, Jesus Christos says in, in, in the Bible, you know, like, in vain, right, in vain do they worship me, right, in vain do they worship me. Here we go, here we go, here we go right here. I know this is the Bible, but you can uck out of here. You know, I and I Rastafari, right? In the teaching of the Rastafari Kedamari Hala Salasi, you know, and other other little denominations or whatnot that want to go against the teaching. If that's what they want to do, then you do what you do, right? We'll continue to proclaim the truth, what's true. Matthew chapter 15, verse 9, but in vain do they worship me. Red letter, red letter. Isn't it red letter? Mm. What do they teach? Do they teach the teaching of His Majesty? Right? Were they teaching the, the teaching of, of Ha Torah, of the Torah even in the time of Yeshua, Ha Notri? No, they were teaching for doctrines. Teaching for doctrines. Teaching for teachings. Right? Um, didascalia. You see what the Didascalia? Right? Didasco. Didasco in the Koine Greek means to teach. And we have Didascalia. Didascalia. You see, some mind and mind don't have the heart and mind for the real study. Because mm. well, you got to have the spirit to study. Right? You got to have a spirit for study. Any, anybody out there who be studying, you know, you're doing research and studying and learning things and learning things, maybe new things. And, and you know you need the spirit for that. You know, if it ain't in your spirit, it's like people going to school. How many times people go to school and... And, and nothing ever stick. They, they are bored to uck in class. So this may not be for you, right? But they're teaching for teachings, right? They're, they're, they're doctrining for doctrines, the commandments of men. So a man tells you such and such, 
but he's the Christ. A man tells you this and man tells you that, right? Mm. The beauty of it about it is that his majesty never had to say to I and I that he's the Christ. We put two and two together because he's anointed and he sits on the throne of David, right? In that biblical land mentioned in the Bible, even in the prophecy in Psalm 87 verse 4. With Ethiopia, this man was born there. And then we see the works do follow. Right? The works to follow. Let's go to Mark 7 and 7. Right? Mark 7 and 7. How be it in vain do they worship me? Teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. In fact, let's point this out. One commandment of men, right, among many rosters out there is they, many ones have been taught or learned or heard say that they fast on the Sabbath. How many of you will be fasting on the Sabbath from Friday to Saturday? I guess that when, when, yeah. And you think that's according to the teaching of his majesty? Mm. There's no fasting on the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day is a day of joy, a day of rejoicing, right? Especially in Jah word and in Jah way. You know, especially if you work. See, some people be talking about Sabbath, but they don't work. Remember, the commandment says, how many days? Six days you shall work. So there's, there's work and there's rest. Some people talk about all the rest, rest, rest. But where's the work? Put in that work. So one of the commandments of men is that they tell ones and ones that there's a fast on the Sabbath day. Mm. And you know that comes from a misreading of the Bible. Right? And they misread the Bible because they still have this 400 years curse on them. Right? Because they have not submitted to the teaching of his mind. You have to submit. You got to submit. They, you know, the proud, boasting. Let's go to the next quote right here. Right? Let no man beguile you. So enough ones are being beguiled. Back in the days, they used to talk about weak heart. You ever heard ones and ones talk about weak heart? Right? Weak heart. A lot of the sayings that the, that the, that the first proclaimers of Rastafari proclaimed, I don't hear being proclaimed anymore. When I and I was called forward, I heard it proclaimed. But then somewhere along the late 90s and we come into this new millennium, you know, I don't know, maybe social media, you know, but we're not, we're not against social media because social media, but since we're on this platform of social media, we have to confront the false doctrines, the disinformation. The lies out there. This is a bunch of lies. And I don't think many ones know that they're liars. They don't even know that they're lying. Because they never study these things. Otherwise, they wouldn't be confounding things. Talking about the Bible. Ethiopia was conquered by the Bible, really. Hmm. Right? And saying, well, the Bahita, we worshiped his majesty. Well, if, if that is so, you saying the Bahita, we don't check for the Bible? <laughs> check, check. Colossians 2 and 18 says, let no man beguile you. Beguile. What's beguile? What beguile? Right? Last time I saw that word beguile is when Eve said, Eve said that, that the serpent had beguiled her. Mm. Where? In the desert? No, in the garden. The garden of delight. To decide as umpire against someone. Mm. Right? That's one definition of this word right here, beguile. Kata Kata brabeo, kata rab uo, 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 coin of Greek here, right? Second one says defraud or beguile of the prize of victory. A lot of ones are getting beguiled. Yes, sincerely, I think many are, are coming to Rastafari for sincerity. That's a sincerity for one. But they're getting caught up, right? They're getting caught up. It says, in my father's house, there are many mansions. We're all about the father's house. And this is a time of judgment. It says, first judgment must come to the house of God. So that means the Beta Rastafari, this is the time, right? Ones are being defrauded and beguiled of the prize of victory. Metaphorically, deprived of salvation. Chan. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Strong says, right, to award the price against. That is figuratively to the fraud of salvation, to award the price against, which is by a figure of speech to the fraud of salvation, to beguile of reward. So let no man beguile you of your reward in voluntary humility. That's like, just humble, just be humble. Because this is the great elder. Great elder. Well, see, this is why we don't cast aside the teaching of his majesty, right? Because and not casting aside the teaching of his majesty, we got to say right here, 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 
let the elders that rule well and we want to heal up the Rastafari elders right even those elders that were I and I elders that ruled well right let them be accounted worthy of double honor especially they who labor in the word and doctrine in the word and the teaching even the teaching of his majesty even when to uphold the teaching against ones and ones who are, you know, have numbers because, you know, they have a group, you know, so they got numbers of enough ones who are saying the same thing, so forth and so on, because they've been beguiled, right? They don't know the truth for themselves, right? Because he, well, as Matthew said, to learn the truth for yourself, he's talking about the Bible. So a man coming to you, right, using the Bible, then say, well, we can't bring the Bible, but he's trying to use the Bible. Right? To do what? To beguile you of your reward in the voluntary humility and in worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he have not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshy mind. So you got to be careful, you know, because a fleshy mind will look at just a book, even a book like the Bible, say, it's the Bible that did it. No, it's your fleshy mind, it's your carnal mind. So Ayabingi, Nayabingi says, I and I now want no carnal mind. Right, in fact, we should just go to Psalm 23. Jehovah is I and I shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not be caught lacking. So if Jah is really your shepherd, you're not going to be caught wanty, wanty, or lacking. Enough ones are coming up lacking. Right? Give us a teaching of his majesty. So this is the verse we want to show you right here in Matthew 15 and 9, but in vain. <coughs> Take it in, take it in. Read it, read it for yourself. In vain. Because it's a red letter. What did the Christ say in the scripts? Is that when he returns as the king, right? He will take, the father will take of the sons because what the son has is what belongs to the father already. So even this teaching in the Bible is, according to that teaching of the Bible, is a teaching of his majesty. See, this is how you know his imperial majesty. Because of the revelation. Not because of mind tell you, right? But because the words show you and you see the reality in living color. But in vain do they worship me. Mm -mm. Teaching for teachings, teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. So it's almost like we're in a time like it was in the first century where there was Yeshua, there was the Nazarenes, but there were other groups. There were Pharisees, there were Sadducees, there were scribes, there were some, you know, lawyers who, who knew a little bit about this and that, you know. Um, you had, what, the Pharisees, the Herodians, you know, you got the political folks, you know, who mix up sometimes with the religious folks, you know, into the cults, right? So people ask whether... Rastafari is a cult. Some even allege that Rastafari is a cult. No, 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 no. Rastafari is the man. Rastafari is I and I and the children. Rastafari is the movement, right? Rastafari is the fullness. Now, on the Rasta thing, well, you know, whenever you, 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 listen, the, the name is Rastafari, right? So you chop it down short, right? It's like the word is culture, right? You chop it down short, you get what? You chop it down short, you have cult. Alright? So don't bring the Bible into Africa. You know, we could have actually approached it like this. It's kind of too late for that, right? Mm-hmm. Isn't kind of too late for that? The Bible's already there. Alright? But what about the Ethiopian Bible? But then the guy goes so far, he says, Well, well, Ethiopia was conquered by the Bible. Well, well, well you have to tell me when was that? When? When did that happen? Right? According to the let's let's put it in the context. According to the teaching of his majesty, when was Ethiopia conquered by the Bible? According to the teaching of his majesty. Then they say, Well, well, his majesty they kinda make his majesty defender of the faith. Like 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 that was something that he would not normally be doing, but he he did it any what, what are you talking about, man? What are you talking about? You're mixing up like what white supremacy, white racism, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant Christianities have done to you, right? And this shows that new birth is still to come. It, this reminds me of, um, there were some ones and ones, let me show this right here in the scripture. Um, what was that part where you said that um, there was ones that Paul had ran into? I, I know people got all sorts of things to say about Paul, but we listen to what Hala Selassie said about Rabbi Shaul, a.k.a. the Apostle Paul. There's a verse, let me see if I can remember this verse right here, 
which 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 book is it? I think it's is it Galatians, where um, oh, okay, yeah. Key word is John's baptism. Remember who we identify as John within this Rastafari revelation. We identify it as a John the Baptist, not John the Revelator, but John the Baptist, right? As Marcus Messiah Garvey, right? And the Trinity is a Trinity that is Manti defense, right? According to the teaching, not another latter day something, you know. I mean, if that's what you're dealing with, you know, well, then deal with that. But if it contradicts the teaching of His Majesty, we're going to have to deal with that. Right, so right here, it says right here, the baptism of John, when was it? Okay, boom, let's scroll down here. Baptism of John, baptism of John. Okay, from beginning from the baptism of John. Let's go down here. Baptism of John. Okay, okay, Acts of the Apostles. Right, I think it's also, let's see, Acts of the Apostles. Just going through the verses right here. Okay, my bad, it was Acts of the Apostles. Right, I think he said something else about the same group of ones and ones. Picks up on it. I'll find it and bring it forward to you. But here, let's touch on this right here. Let's go to okay. Acts of the Apostle 1825. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. Right? He only knew the baptism of John. Right? It says here he was only knowing the baptism of John. Right? Okay, it's Acts 19 and 3. But we're going to show you something. Because some only know when you hear a lot of Rastafari that put Garveyism before the teaching of his majesty. So it's like John was like a rabbi. Right? In the real context, John was a rabbi. He was, he was a, a, a scholar of, of Torah. Right? He was learned in the Torah right? and, and the teaching and the prophets and the tradition. And he saw his work to fulfill that which was written by the prophet. Right? Like, make ye straight the way of the Lord. You know what I mean? Make ye straight the way of the Lord. Now, here we have this man here. Is this Apollo? Who was this Apollo? And yeah, there was a certain Yehudi, a certain Jew. It's like we're saying, like there's a certain Rasta, right, named Apollos. He was born at Alexandria. Where, where's Alexandria? Egypt. Now remember, even in the 4th century, the Christianity that came into Ethiopia, Ethiopia already had Christians or people who were Nazarene slash Christian, right, since the time of the 1st century, since the time of the Ethiopian official. As his majesty says, Acts of the Apostles chapter 8. So that dismisses all that that bullshit. I have to just say it's bull well well bullshit has a has a worthy that human excrement, right? That's the worst. It's toxic. Bullshit, you know, bullshit has a useful, you know, it, you know, well, sort of. It's the cow shit that's really the better shit. You know, the cow, the female. <laughs> anyway, verse 24. And a certain Jew, I hope one's not offended with you know, just plain English. Um, and a certain Jew named Apollos, born in Alexandria. I want to make a connection here, right? Take note. An eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures. Mighty in the what? The scriptures. Mm. I want you to make note that when it says the scriptures, it's not talking about Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Or any book that comes after it all the way up to Revelation. Right? It's not talking about Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John or the other books up to Revelation. What it's talking about right here, it was talking about what ones may call today the Tanakh or the Torah, the Nabim, the prophets, Nabim, and the Ketubim, right? And the writings, T-N-K, it's an acronym, right? Or the Brit Hayashana, the Hebrew scriptures. So he was mighty, right? Very strong in the scriptures. So we want to point out qualifications, Right? Because ones and ones are being misled by ones who are misread. Right? Came to Ephesus, right? Where, where we have one of the seven churches mentioned in Revelation. And it says, This man was instructed in the way of Ha Adon, right? Of the Lord, of Adonai. And being fervent, he had a zeal, right? In the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of Ha Adon, right? Knowing only the baptism of John. So he taught the things of Yahweh, of Jehovah, but he was strong in like the Old Testament, we say scriptures, and this is being written here 
concerning the first century time is it for all these books were even written you know what I mean even if they were fragments or scrolls or people took notes they didn't compile it like we have it compiled now here today whole other video there 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 but this one whose name was Apollos he only knew of the baptism of John right and he began to speak boldly in the synagogue the synagogue was like the Hebrew church Let's not get it twisted. The Hebrew church, synagogue, bringing together the gathering. We talk about the gathering, right? The gathering. So we will speak in Greek instead of English. We'll call it synagogue. Simple. People have a lot of ideas because looking at Revelation 2 and 9 and 3. Oh, the synagogue of Satan. Oh. Yeah, but if you really were studying this thing, it's like saying the church of Satan. The church of Satan doesn't qualify every so-called church, right? It's just the church of Satan which distinguishes it from the other churches. So synagogue was assembly, was where they gathered of Yehudi. It's like we as Rastafari, that we have our gathering, formally gathered together to offer prayers and listen to the reading and expositions of the scripture. Maybe one that's thrown out the Bible because he can't expound on the scriptures, right? It's a lot of yabba dabba doo uh, yabba dabba doo doo, right? Assemblies of that sort were held every Sabbath and feast day. Notice, we don't fast on the Sabbath, neither do we fast on a feast day. The only day, and it's not even a feast day, but the only high holy day, right, according to the Brit HaYashana, we say the Old Covenant, right, was Yom HaKippurim, Yom Kippur, they call it today, right? Afterward, also on the second and fifth days of the week, right, the second and fifth days. See, on the second and fifth days, there was gathering. Right, ones and ones also fasted. Right, some fasted Mondays, right, and Wednesdays, some fasted Wednesdays and Fridays, right, Friday. But then when the eve came in, that began the Sabbath, and they would prepare for the 12 hours of the Sabbath day, right. Name transferred to the assembly. You see what it says right there? The name synagogue, you see, was transferred to the assembly of Christians, or more in context historically, of Nazarenes. Because they were Nazarenes before other people called them Christians. We were Rastafari before other people called us Rasta. You get it? We were Rastafari before others called us Rasta. Right? Transferred to the assembly of the Christians, right? Or Nazarenes, formally t gathered together for religious purposes. So I'm happy you've seen this here. So that means that the Christian churches, but there were some assemblies of those who call themselves Christians, like of Rasta, Rastafari, right, who had doctrine that was contradicting the doctrine that the Messiah taught us. Mm. Ain't nothing new, right, under the sun. The buildings where those solemn Yehudi assemblies are held, synagogues seem to date their origin from the Babylonian exile. Now everybody's going to get beside them. Oh, look at the Babylonian. Nigga, where you at? Call this Babylon, right? Yeah? Yeah, from this exile. So we're not gathering here. We're not doing things to uplift our spiritual and psychological and, and health, the holistic and material consciousness, so to speak. In the times of Yeshua and the apostles, every town, not only in Palestine, <coughs> but also among the Gentiles, that means abroad or foreign. You know, you hear a lot of mind and mind talk about foreign. So the Gentiles, so those who are home and those who are abroad. Right? If it contained a considerable number of Yehudi or Jewish inhabitants had at least one synagogue, right? That's I mean a gathering place. The larger towns, several or even many. These were also used for trials and inflicting punishments. Right? So the synagogue is a feminine word, so the assembly gathering together is a feminine. That's where the church idea, the church is like the bride, and Moshia is the head. Right? And when we say Moshia, to say the black Christ, we're speaking of Christ in his kingly character. That's who I and I, as called chosen and faithful Rastafari, is speaking about. Now, in that sense, we all have an anointing, you know, but he is the anointed of I and I, the anointed ones. Right? And therefore, since he's our head, we don't have to put no next man on our head. Yes, we have leading brethren, right, amongst I and I, but they have to have some of these strengths that we're speaking about right here. Right? Know how to read and expound the scripture. Right? Know how to build up the body right, of the Messiah, the body of Christ. Specifically, the Yehudi synagogue, the meeting or the place, by analogy, it becomes a Christian church. Because the church is a later English word that comes in. Right? Before it was the assembly, congregation, or the gathering together in the Greek, known as synagogue. Right? So it says that 
he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, the gathering, right? Whom, when Aquila and Priscilla, right, or Priscilla, right, had heard, right, they took him to them. Now, Aquila, let's go over here, Aquila, no, that's the Kai, go over there, Aquila, Aquilas, right, Aquilas, right, noun masculine, right, and Priscilla, Priscilla is a woman, so it's like a husband and a wife, right, little Prisca, little Prisca, her name means, yeah, she was a, a Christian Nazarene woman, wife of Aquila, right, when they heard him, right, in the gathering, being so bold and speaking, they took him to them, they took him too, right, and they expounded, what, what's expounding? They expounded, ektit aime, ektit aime, ektit aime, ektit aime, ektit aime, right? To place or set out, to put outside, to expose, to set up, to exhibit, in a metaphorical sense, to set forth, to declare, to expound. Let's bring it out, to expose, to declare. In order to clarify him, right? To expound to him the way of Elohim, of Hilehim more perfectly right so because he only knew up to the he knew the scriptures notice he knew the scriptures the old testament what does Hala Selassie say first Ethiopia received the the old testament scriptures right from the times of Solomon and the queen of the south the queen of Sheba so how do you, how do you guys be saying all this nonsense isn't that part of the Bible? That's the Old Testament part of the Bible. Ethiopia had that before the New Testament. Come off it, right? And when he was disposed to pass into, okay, Acacia, the brethren wrote exhorting the disciples to receive him. Now notice, it was only after he was expounded more fully. He already had a groundation, but he needed to be bu built up. Right, to get the fullness. After you get the fullness, right, the brethren wrote, right, exhorting, bigging up the disciples, encouraging the disciples to receive him. Who, when he was come, he helped them enough, much, that had believed or had admitted, had credo, right, had credited, pistillo, right, to think to be true. Credited, to place confidence in, right, to credit. Right? To trust. Let's get down to the root right here. Right? To have faith in with respect to a person or a thing. That is to credit. Right? So real faith is credit. Who do you credit? Who do you trust? Or what do you credit? What do you trust? What do you admit as truth? Right? We could get off the word be lie. Be lie. Eve. Look, lies in the center. Lies in the center. Then, then you become like your pineal gland gets calcified. You can't get beyond that. Right? When that's a stepping stone. But instead of stepping on that stone, you stumbled over. It became a stumbling block, right? Which had credited through grace, right? For he mightily convinced the Yehudi. So he was able, he was a Yehudi himself from Egypt, from Alexandria, Skinderia, right? And so he was able to convince the other Yehudi, right? Like I and I are seeking to persuade the other Rastafari, right? And that publicly, publicly, right? So back then, right? Belonging to the people, the status, put it out, right? Like, share, and subscribe. Showing by the scriptures. Showing by the what? The scriptures. See, these niggas can't show by the scriptures. Right? That Adamawi Hala Salasi, right? Is that return Messiah that Yeshua spoke of according to the scripture. Because they got white Christianity in them so deep. You know what I mean? They close their eyes, say Jesus, they see Kaiser Borgia, man. Right? The scriptures that Yeshua was Christ. That Yeshua was the anointed. Yeshua Ha Moshia. One more area right here. Right? One more area right here. Let's go right here. Now this is the part. Right? Because many of the man of mine from some of the older mansion them. I think the mansions had their time. Right? Those mansions had their time. My right? father is seeking to bring us out of this wilderness. Right? That old generation, you know, has, has, has already passed away in the wilderness, so to speak. Right, the promised land is opening up. Mm -hmm. But first, the promised land of the consciousness. See, you have to enter into the promised land. You have to repatriate, return to the Father. Right, repatriate, return to the Father. People got that all twisted, all wrong. Mm -hmm. Come out of Babylon. Right, Exodus. Use those terms. Right, live and direct. But repatriation, pater. Look up pater. Pater is Father. Return to the Father. And no man can come. Right? To the Father except through the Son, Yeshua. 
right? And this is the problem here. This is why their teaching doesn't line up. Doesn't line up with the teaching of his majesty, right? And he said to them, right? Well, let's get this part here. Let's, let's bring out this part right here. Okay, Acts 19. This will be our final exhibit right here, or at least going to seek to fulfill right here. And it came to pass that while Apollos, remember we were talking about Apollos just previous, was at Corinth. Apollos, Paul, let's be my Rabbi Shaul, the apostle to the Gentiles. Right, we know him since he's a Yehudi and we, the black Jews of the line of the tribe of Judah, we know he's a rabbi. Right? But now he is an apostle. He's one sent. You know, Yeshua had to knock him down off his horse, had to humble him, right? So Paul, having passed through the upper coast and came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples, right? So notice, so it came to pass while Paul, while Paulos was at Corinth, that Paul, he passed through the upper coast. He came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. That's like I and I, it's Rastafari. Even those terminologies are not used as they were used from the beginning because disciple has that we have to learn and grow we kids can't grow our locks smoke some herb you know go bingy go reggae show or something like that and that's not how it come about right it's an order right how, he said to them have y'all received the holy ghost now that's the king james translation have you received the memphis caduce right have you received the ruach kadosh right have you received the spirit the irid of truth right have you received the Holy Spirit since y'all believed, since y'all credited, since y'all had credit, place your credit, right? Since y'all admitted as truth. And they said to him, we have not so much heard whether there be any Holy Ghost or more updated Holy Spirit, Ruach HaKadosh in the Hebrew, Memphis Kedus in them heart, the goodness, yeah? So notice, he came across certain disciples. So you were disciples in the context of like disciples of Yeshua. You know, there were the 12 disciples that intimately knew Yeshua, but then there also were like the 72, right? There was a 38 holy woman. You know what I mean? There was a 120. There was others as well. You know what I mean? So there were others who, and ones who became disciples of Yeshua through those who were disciples or apostles of Yeshua. So it was like, um, how can they say right there? It was like a chain of custody. You know, like when they say like evidence, you know, regarding evidence, when you get evidence, well, where do you get this evidence? Oh, I got some evidence. Where do you get it from? Did you make it up? Or somebody gave it to you? Where do you give it, get it from? So you have to kind of control that chain of custody so that evidence doesn't get, you know, witness don't get tampered with. So there's a lot of witness tampering that we're hearing, you know, amongst certain ones hearsays and heresies and disinformation and fake news right amongst ones and ones in Rastafari it's like the same fake news that ones outside of Rastafari be putting forward some minor mind in Rastafari are putting forward or as Rasta putting forward the same fake news and I think it's like these disciples right here right because they were disciples right of Yeshua right they was admitting in Yeshua HaMushia right but when they're asked by Paul, Paul asks him, have you received? Notice, notice the language, language, language. Have you kabbalah? Have you received? Have you received the Holy Spirit since y'all believed, believed, since y'all admitted the truth? And they said to him, we have not so much as heard. They, they didn't hear. They heard a lot of things, but they didn't hear whether there be any Holy Spirit. Mm. Wow. Know ye not that your bodies are the temple of God? Right? If his Holy Spirit, you see, it, the connection of the Holy Spirit dwelling in there, right? The temple. Because my mind said, my body is a temple of God. Where's the Holy Spirit? Uh, so they didn't even know about the Holy Spirit, right? And he said to them, to what then were you baptized? In other words, what did you get immersed in? Because baptism is getting immersed, getting deep, like going deep in the water. You know, it's like baptism is like the difference between taking a bath and taking a shower. Right? You all know the difference between taking a bath. When you take a bath, it's really when you get deep. You know, you soak in it. Right? That's what we're supposed to do with the teaching. We're supposed to soak in it. Right? Some people got sprinkled. They got sprinkled something. And they said, and they said to John's baptism. To, oh, oh, okay. It makes sense. John who got offended, right? Didn't John get offended? It seems like some of these guys that push Marcus Garvey so hard, right, as Rastafari, above and beyond the teaching of his majesty. Right? Or alongside, like they both go hand in hand. 
right? His majesty is the higher teaching. Let me point that out right there. Garvey is a stepping stone, right? As John the Baptist was, so to speak, a stepping stone, if one may speak this way, right? So they said that they only, you know, they were baptized into John's baptism. Mm. Now, what was John's baptism? Any of you remember what John's baptism was? Right? Just to show you how to rightly divide the word right here. Right? Let's go over here. John's baptism, Mark chapter 1 verse 4. John did baptize in the wilderness and preach the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins, for remission of uckeries or fukeries, lack, falling short, missing the mark. Right? So what was the baptism of John? It was a baptism of repentance. What is repentance? Here's what metanoia. What is metanoia? Metanoia is a change of mind. Some of you guys are thinking the same way they were thinking before. Nothing changed. There's, there's no Holy Spirit. There's no holy thought. There's not that higher thought. They're still in the carnal mind. That's why they're, you know, making these errors sincerely. Many of them. Many of them, I think, are making these errors sincerely. Right? And I hope and pray, Jah give I and I grace that they'll receive this message gracefully. A change of mind as it appears to one who repents. So repentance has to do with a change. Metanoia, the word metanoia basically means a change of mind if you break it down. Right? Metanoia, right? Let's go right here. Met, um, metaneo. Metaneo is to change one's mind. Right? To change one's mind for the better. Right? And like to amend, heartily to amend with abhorrence of one's past fukeries, uckeries. You know, you put away the past uckeries. You know, yeah, I did those things, but I don't do those things no more. In that sense right there. But to put it simple like um, Steve Jobs did, think differently. Look, so think differently. That's what metanoia, repent means. Think differently. Now, suppose we read it like this. Right, to make it live and direct and to preach to proclaim the baptism, the immersion of thinking differently for the remission, for the remission, right? Our faces, the release, the release from bondage, right? Forgiveness, pardon, but ones that are still under that bondage, right? Because when you say such things, right, concerning the King of Kings, right, and that which he holds and regards highly means you off. Right? For the remission of sins of uckery. So let's just complete this right here, here, here. So they had asked him, they had asked them, or, or rather, Paul had asked them. Then said Paul and John, verily baptize with baptism of repentance. Right? And then Paul said that John for real had baptized with baptism of repentance. I say to you, for real, John the Baptist, our black John the Baptist, Mark and Messiah Garvey, he baptized, right? He immersed with the immersion, right, of thinking differently concerning your blackness. You as black people and Ethiopian, right? That Ethiopian connection, as well as the Bible connection as well. You know, through the spectacles of Ethiopia, right? That's what John, our black John the Baptist, that's his proper role. Not as part of a trinity, Right? When his majesty is just one part of a trinity. No, that's not the trinity that his majesty is a part of. That means you really don't understand this Bible from either the Western white man version and you won't definitely understand it from the black man or from the, his majesty's Bible as well. Right? Then said Paul, John, unless you get that change of mind, John verily baptized the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should be lived, that they should credit, admit, admit on him who should come after him. Isn't the same with Marcus Messiah Garvey? Right? Who came after him? Right? Who's revealed after him in that sense? At Amawi Hala Selassie upon the throne of great King David, right? Who should come after him? Right? And here it says, that is on the Messiah Yeshua. Right? Because in the order of things, John came before. Right? I mean, they both, you know, they, they only are like a couple of, you know, a couple of months apart. I think about maybe, what was it? She was in her sixth month. So, um, what was it? Nine months, five days. So, they about like four, almost like maybe four months, maybe five days, four months apart. Right? You know, just to show that right there, the proximity of John with Yeshua. Right? So this is what Paul said to them. He said for real because they were disciples right, of Garveyism. To put it in Rastafari terms, they were disciples of Garveyism. 
And I don't know how many of you all have encountered sincere brothers and well-learned, well-read, experienced brothers in Garvey. And I've reasoned with some of them. And some of them hit me up with all that disinfo that some of the rosters be circulating and all that heresy stuff. Right? And then when I put them on the facts, it was like they saw his majesty totally different. A lot of them loved Garvey, but didn't check for his majesty. And they thought that Rasta was a big contradiction. Because how could you check for Garvey, and then Garvey said what he's alleged to have said about his majesty? And then when I put them on the John the Baptist and Jesus Christ and chapter 11 of Matthew, the bankruptcy chapter, that shows you a theory. That's exactly what Garvey did. So that's another sign that's proof positive of the Rastafari revelation according to the scripture. See, the white man never taught you that, and he never will, because that's not, that's not his truth. Right? What is his truth? When they heard this, right? when they heard this, they were baptized. Now they got deep, they got immersed in the name of Ha Adon Adawan Yeshua. And when Paul Paulos had laid his hands upon them, Right? The laying on of hands. I know many orders, even Bobo Shanti and certain orders, they have that laying on of hands and anointing as well. At least they used to at one time, right? To point out what's the positive and right and accurate, right? Upon them, right? The Holy Spirit, you guys strike that ghost right there, right? L listen, 4151, Numa. Numa means is a third person of the triune. The triune God, the Holy Spirit, co-equal and co-eternal with the Father and Son. So when we're speaking about Hala Selassie from the teaching of his magic, we're speaking about the Father, right, in the revelation. You know, God in the flesh, as we'll say, because God, Elohim, is a spirit. Over his check, right, but the God in the flesh, right, that spirit manifests in the flesh. That's why Yeshua said, you'll see me but not see me. And said, how are we going to see you and not see you? And he said, the Father. And he said, the Father will take of mine, but what's, what's mine is his already. This is what we witness when we hear his majesty speaking to us concerning the Bible, concerning these realities, right, of our true spirituality, right? So co-equal, right, co-eternal, right, with the Father and the Son. Right? Sometimes referred to in a way that emphasizes character, his personality and character, the spirit. Right? So to us who receive his majesty, we perceive and receive the spirit. Right? The spirit, that personality and character, and we go check the scripts and the writ, right? And the manifest, we see it's right and accurate. Right? Sometimes also the Holy Spirit is referred to in a way that emphasizes his work and power, the spirit. Right? But it, the spirit the Holy Spirit is never referred to as a depersonalized force. That's where the Jehovah Witness, I have to call you on this, on, the, on their doctrine of the Trinity, is Jehovah Wickedness, right? But Jehovah Witness, they speak about the Holy Spirit like against the Trinity and they look at the Spirit depersonalized because they're getting confused, right? In the Ruach sense, right? As wind and ear and in the Ruach HaKadosh. Right? In the Holy Spirit sense, as it's revealed in the scripture, the spirit is that vital part. So like we have our spirit. Man is a trinity. Man is a trinity. This is what we teach. The teaching of the man said that man is a trinity. Man has spirit, he has soul, and he has a physical carbon organic structure called a body. Right? So the spirit, now just looking at the spirit, not the Holy Spirit, but the spirit. Right? Because the Holy Spirit is his spirit. Right? Having his spirit and we have our spirit that's why in romans chapter what is it 8 verse 28 around is it around their parts in chapter 8 where it says his spirit testified of our spirit right and this is how we know that we are b'nai elohim we are walude gziave we are children of the power we're children of god the spirit in us is that vital principle by which the body is animated the spirit, the rational spirit is that power by which the human being feels, thinks, and decides. Well, it's the mind. To bring it out more clear, the spirit is that mind aspect. And it's very much related to the soul. It's not the spirit and is not the soul and the soul is not the spirit. But they are related like a, kind of like a man and a woman, right, as one. Right? It's the voice that really makes things bad, if you over us. A spirit, right? in the simple essence, devoid of all or at least all grosser matter, possessed of the power of knowing. This is why we know that the spirit is that mind aspect right? in man, desiring, deciding, and acting. 
right? A life-giving spirit. The human soul has left the body. Okay, when the human soul has left the body, it's because the spirit is gone. And the soul, let me put it like this. The soul is she. The spirit in this aspect is he, right? And the soul is dependent. The fuel, the fuel for the soul is spirit, right? But other spirits come into the mix too. We have to teach on the spirit right here, right? So that ones can discern spirits. But the basic principle is that when the human soul has left the body because the spirit is gone, right? So when the spirit is gone, the human soul has nothing to sustain herself, in other words. Because that's, that's her energy, that's her life. You know what I mean? She is like the wife, so to speak. Now, the spirit is higher than man, but lower than Elohim. Right? So our spiritual aspect and the spirit aspects, like when we talk about angels and demons, angels and demons are spirits, but they are like, they manifest, the best way we can perceive them is as thoughts. You ever be thinking something and another thought come to you? Some of the thought is good, some of the thought is bad, some of the thought is true, some of the thought is false. Ever come to you, a lot of thoughts come to you? Sometimes people get like overwhelmed with thoughts, right? And different thoughts. Right? Sometimes contradictory thoughts. These are like the, the, the evil spirits. Right? The evil spirits are like that poltergeist thing. Right? This is real science, real world science right here. But let's come off of this for a moment. The spiritual nature of the Messiah, of that anointing higher than the highest angels. So now when we get that Holy Spirit sense, we're brought up. Right? And it's, it brings us into that equal realm, that oneness realm to Elohim. This is Tawahidah. This is where the Tawahido, the Orthodox doctrine, basically expounds this basic biblical teaching from Old Testament to New Testament, right? To the revelation, God and man, right? God in the flesh, the divine nature of Moshiach, right? So we can get into this a little bit more, get into the whole spirit teaching right there. But at this particular point, Paul lays hands on them, right? You know, lay, it, it's a way to signify. You know what I mean? It's a way to signify. Like, yo, this is my homie right here. And I want you to listen to him. So if I bring my homie in the room, I may lay my hand on his shoulder. Right? While I'm talking to you that he's the one, man. He's, he's the one I have represented me such and such and such. So in that sense as well, that like authority, transferring authority. When Paul did that, the Holy Spirit right, came on them. Right? And they spake with tongues and prophesied. You see, man and man is stuck in this bad English, you know, stuck in some bad English, some makeup words that we make up and we try to like, you know, do our little spirituality on it to make it something. We have to give us the teaching, Nati Dread learned the Amarik, right? Twelve tribes learned the Amarik, right? Bobo Shanti, Nayabingi, right? Learn the Hebrew. Give thanks to the Kalanji, that audio clip right there where you talk about these languages. But we emphasize that the Hebrew, the biblical Hebrew, and the royal Amharic, and getting a better comprehension of this angleless, this angelless, this angleless, this English. And all the men were about 12. So there was 12 of these brethren here, right? Right? And he went into the synagogue, the, the Hebrew church, the Jewish church, and spake boldly for the space of three months, disputing. See, people say, oh, why you, why you got to argue? No, no, some of you have to dia legomai. Yeah, I got a dia legomai, that nigga right there. What's a dia legomai? It's a G1256, to think different things with oneself, right? To mingle thought with thought, like to reason, come make with reason together to ponder, to resolve in mind, but it's also to discourse and to persuade, my right? patho, my right? opito, to persuade, to induce one to credit this by showing and proving what we're seeking to do even in this vlog here with our fellow Rasta and Rastafari brethren, my right? ancestor in them. The things concerning the kingdom. So what was he speaking about? The things concerning the kingdom of Elohim. The kingdom of Elohim is always about that government. And now we're in this time right here, here, here. Thy will be done. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in, <laughs> you know, Zion. Yes, I. Shalom, Habarim. Shalom. Stay tuned. Hopefully we'll be able to bring that forward to y'all. The um, fake news. You know, fake news on Ethiopia, the Bible, and Christianity. Because we want to touch on a few of the points. 
you know, the few of the 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 disinfo, the, the main points of the disinformation that's being put out there, right? By Rastas, the ones who call themselves Rasta and Rastafari. You know, that's why we say re-education, right? Re-education is the key. You know, we need to learn the roots of Rastafari. Yes, I. Rastafari. Doesn't mean head creator. Remember the one who told you that as well. Put you up on the Kadamawi. Now more ones and ones are. But then don't stop there. The education's going on here, here, here. Shalom, Chabarim. Shalom.